let's take a look at some of the menus on the right hand side here. So you have some icons uh, on the top, which correspond to these tabs on the right hand side. So again, the channel box is one of the most important ones. That's the same thing as the, the 3D Max box down here for translating coordinates. You know, you can right click and reset. That's the same thing as it is in 3D Max. What we're going to take a look at next is tool settings. And if you don't see it, you can access it from this button up here at the top with the hammer. If I hold control and right click and I go to edges and then to edges and I do a ring by holding shift, I can then right click and go to insert edge loop, or you can hit this little option box here. It just gives you the options for that tool. So I'm going to hit that and it automatically brings up the toolbox. I'm just going to expand this. Now, there's different options for this tool. So if I were to hold shift right now with this setting, I get an insert loop dead in the center of whatever two edges it's in between, which is kind of what I want right now. Cause I'm going to, I want to get something right down the middle. So I'll just do one along the side there, or you can do relative, right? So that gives you the ability to drag. And a common modeling style inside of Maya is to, instead of using like chamfer, uh, is to actually just add insert edge loops like this, let's say to get your uh, your fencing edges or your reinforcing edges inside of Max. So in Maya, a lot of modelers will do this. They'll just add their loops to the corners so that when you subdivide, you get two nice, clean, tight corners, right? So mesh preview smooth, just to take a look. So basically, if you use insert edge loop and you want a little bit more flexibility, make sure you check the options inside the tool settings. If I switch to faces real quick, I'm just going to delete a face, select an edge and select the move to with W and hit shift. You can extrude up that way. Okay. That was just using the, the real extrude or you can hold shift to extrude. And let's say I go to C for cut. It changes the options inside the tool settings. So any tool that you use, so let's say I hit W for the move tool, it'll give me options so I can align things to the world or the object. So just be aware that the tool settings have all the tool options for what whatever current tool you're using. Inside of Maya, let's say I wanted to connect these two, I can shift right click and go to bridge. And that fills the gap. Obviously you can hockey that just like Max. So what I really wanted to talk about though, was up here, modeling tools, you have a whole bunch of options. So these are obviously what, like I said, modeling tools, a lot of these we have keybound already. And one of the nicest things inside of Maya is actually that the symmetry is really, it just works. Something about the symmetry feels a lot better than max. So I have a pick an object and I hit object X and let's move some verts. And you'll see that right away, symmetry has been applied to my object. So symmetry in Maya, I actually think is a lot better than Max, to be honest with you. So to do the same thing inside of Max, I'll just delete half of it. And then you'd have to add a symmetry. But the problem with that a lot of the times is then you have to go below that stack. And yeah, sure, you can turn on the toggle, but it's just it's just kind of cumbersome to have to do that every time you just want to add a little bit of symmetry to have like two things. You can if you accidentally pop out of editable poly, then you can't edit it. And then if you have to have the uh, show end result on in order to see it, so Maya just makes it a lot easier by just having the simple option of turning on object X, Y, whatever, and things just seem to work a lot better. One of the nicest tools inside of Maya is beveled edge. So if I right click and I go to beveled edge, give me the options. I'll just hit bevel and you can decide how many segments you want to get nice rounded corners. Looks good to me, right? So it's really nice for getting nice rounded corners. I guess that would be the exact same thing as using a chamfer inside of max. Okay. So that's symmetry. So let's say you've finished modeling your masterpiece and you're ready to do UVs. Unlike 3D Max, where you have to toss on an unwrap UV and then open UV editor like this. Inside of Maya, UVs are just assumed to be part of the model. So you just go to UV, UV editor, and it's right here. 
Inside the Maya UV editor, if you right click, you have access to the same sub object parts as you do outside of the UV editor. So we can access edges and faces and verts. But the other thing that is important to know is that you can access UV shells themselves. So now I'm accessing the UVs, not the actual points. And you can see that as I distort them, red indicates that it has a smaller UV space than the, the actual like world space size of the, the platform or that they're stretching. And blue means that it's bigger, right? So the ideal situation is that you have everything be white and that, that means it has a, a uniform, it means it has a uniform texture space. So let's say I want to separate some faces. I just right click, I go to face. And then I can go to cut and sew and create UV shell. So in Maya's UV editor, a UV shell is the same thing as like a, an element selection inside of Max. So inside of Max, I could do the same thing right now. It's not nicely unwrapped to me. So I could just do a flat map. And as you can see, these are all the, the faces. The other really critical difference inside of 3D Max and Maya is, let's say I did my unwrap on this modifier here, and for some reason I just accidentally deleted it. Well, that UV modifier, that UV unwrap is now gone if I delete it. Whereas in Maya, let's say I just close this, oh, whoops. And I go to UV editor, it's gonna remember, it's just part of the object. So that's one thing that's really nice about Maya is that like your UVs are just kind of an integrated sub object of the object, unlike Max, which is kind of embedded on this uh, unwrap UV until you collapse it. So if I collapse it, then now I'm, I've got my UVs kind of baked into my object, whereas by, in Maya, that's already there by default. So that's kind of a nice difference.